Finally this week, football and the allegations of bribery and corruption that have dogged Qatar's successful bid to host the 2022 World Cup. For example, the international trade unions claim that poor safety standards could cost the lives of 4,000 mostly South Asian migrant workers just in the building of infrastructure. And there's the bid itself. Did dirty money play a role in Qatar's surprise win? All things which our sports correspondent Lee Wellings put to Nasser Al Khatar, a member of Qatar 2022's Supreme Committee. Let me correct you, Lee. First of all, it's actually an investigation into the bidding process of the 2018 2022 World Cup. But Qatar so it, part of that. So, yeah, Qatar is part of that. Russia 2018 is part of that. The whole process is part of that. Everybody involved in that is part of this investigation. So it's, it's unfortunate that people single out uh, Qatar every time they, they discuss it, which is absolutely not the case. We've, we've been true to what we've said in the past. Our statements that we've always put out, that we've held ourselves to the highest ethical standards, stem from our heart. We believe it, we're confident of it, and we're confident of, of, of how we've behaved. But people do single you out, and this is a, a point that I've made, that it, that it is an overall investigation, but they do single you out. The crucial element is the relationship between your committee and Mr. Bin Hammam. What was that relationship? Was there collusion between you? Was he acting on your behalf? Mohammed bin Hammam was an executive committee member, like the rest of the 23 executive committee members that were present at the time. We had to engage with him as we had to engage with everybody else. So definitely there was engagement with him. Was he part of our bid? He was not part, a part of our bid. Did he represent us? Not at all. Have you and your committee at any stage done anything that you are worried about that, that, that is wrong? No. Are you worried that ultimately this World Cup is going to be taken away? We're not worried. We're confident that the World Cup will take place in Qatar. If anyone does try to take it away, because it might not just be about Qatar, it might be the infamous FIFA politics that are involved too, that we can't shy away from. If anyone does try to do that, what would your move be then? And would it involve some kind of legal aspect? Look, I don't want to jump the gun and I don't want to um, anticipate things that we don't know. We're focusing on delivery. We're focusing on learning from the Brazil World Cup. We're focusing on getting as much information as we can from here. And you just have to be confident and focused. That's all you can do. What happens is that people sometimes see a silence on an issue or a delayed response to an issue as some form of admission of guilt. A lot of the reporting has been mudslinging. A lot of the reporting has been allegations that have been sensationalized and we just don't want to be part of it. We don't have time for it. And we measure exactly where we make our responses and when. And have the changes to the laws on migrant workers that have come in over the last few months, have they made enough progress? Have they gone far enough? I think the progress that was made in the time, I think are tremendous. And I think, uh, you know, people need to keep in mind Qatar and the progress of Qatar and the evolution of Qatar. In the past 30 years, what Qatar has achieved is what some Western uh, European countries have achieved in 150 years. That includes laws as well. And uh, labor laws are, are enmeshed within these laws. So what happens also, I believe, with a country that progresses so quickly and, and uh, population-wise um, progresses so quickly. So Qatar is if not the fastest, the second fastest growing country in terms of population. And economically also is the fastest growing uh, country. And with that, you will definitely get imbalances. That means maybe some things don't progress as quickly as some other things. And some things need to catch up. And unfortunately, some laws need to progress and need to catch up with the other developments that are taking place. And this is a natural evolution of any country. We welcome the, we, we welcome the headlines. We welcome the, the pressure. But it's got to be constructive. It, it's not just we found a reason to bash Qatar and we will continue bashing Qatar. And if this reason no longer exists, we'll find another reason. When are people going to embrace the Qatar 2022 World Cup? Look, I think people are embracing it. However, unfortunately, um, what makes the headlines isn't the good stuff. In your heart and in your head, do you feel 100% certain that Qatar will host the 2022 World Cup? Yes.